A new round of stimulus hanging in the balance this morning. The Senate expected to take up a new bill this week as both sides remain deadlocked over key issues like unemployment. President Trump says Democrats do not want to make a deal because it will boost his reelection chances. Joining me right now is the White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows. Mark, it is great to have you this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Great to be with you, Maria. Thank you. So, so the Congress comes back this week. What can we expect from the Senate this week? Well, I think the Senate is not only going to hit the ground running, but uh, actually they've been working over over the break uh, when they were back home in their districts working. I know uh, as late as uh, nine o'clock last night, I was on the phone with a couple of senators as well as uh, Senate leadership to make sure that uh, we put forth a bill uh, coming out of the Senate that at least provides a foundation for getting a, an agreement. I can tell you that there's more that we agree upon than what we disagree upon. And I think it's time that we put politics aside, pass this stimulus, uh, actually allow it to come to the president's desk. He's not only encouraged us, but he's uh, daily uh, checking in to make sure that we're staying engaged to hopefully get relief to the American people. So I was just talking with Cornerstone Macros, Nancy Lazar, and her team, her research team, uh, is saying that they don't think we're going to get anything before the election. Well, I think if, if they're talking to Nancy Pelosi uh, and, and a couple of her people right around her, that may be accurate. But I can tell you there is a groundswell of support among rank and file Democrats and Republicans uh, to suggest that there's some kind of compromise. Listen, when we look at, at uh, uh, enhanced unemployment, when we look at what we can do for schools, when we look at what we can do for those small businesses and direct stimulus checks, I think there's broad scale agreement on that. And uh, right now, the thing that's the stumbling block is, is aid to uh, uh, state and local uh, governments. Uh, the number that Speaker Pelosi puts forth is just not supported by the facts. So we're going to continue to negotiate on that. But uh, I'm optimistic in the next two weeks that the pressure and the voice of the American people will start to have an impact on members of Congress. So, so, Mark, what is the serious sticking point that, uh, that, that keeps a deal from happening? We know that there are certain cities that are in major trouble. Mayor de Blasio says he needs $9 billion right now for New York City. Uh, but, you know, you look at the management of some of these cities before COVID, and that's what the president has talked about. Tell us what the issues are that's stopping a deal. Well, I mean, that $9 billion that you just talked about from Mayor de Blasio is based on a forward looking on what he thinks that he might need for the next uh, budget cycle. When you look at year over year revenues, uh, they they did take a hit about $2 billion. When when you start to really look at the revenue decrease and what we're talking about is, is the actual loss of year over year revenue, uh, it's about $275 billion. Uh, Republicans are willing to address that in a meaningful way to make sure that we provide that assistance. But what we're not going to do is bail out cities that have been poorly run for a long time uh, just so that they can actually uh, have their pet projects on the back of the American taxpayer. And so uh, when it's legitimate needs, I think you'll find that the Republicans, uh, both in the Senate and the House, are willing to address that. Uh, but the number that Nancy Pelosi puts forth is almost $1 trillion. So almost half of the money that she wants to put in, she actually wants to ear market for state and local governments. And that's just not uh, what the American people would support. It's really not where the needs are. And so we're talking about making targeted uh, relief to those people that need it most. And, and what about the $600 that uh, was in place months ago in terms of the unemployment benefit? Is that also a sticking point? When I spoke with the president, he also no mentioned the post office debate. Yeah, I don't see the postal debate being as much of a problem. I can tell you that we actually, before it became the headline news, we actually had an agreement on the post office. I think that took me uh, by surprise when all of a sudden they're talking about uh, needing more money when we had already agreed to $10 billion for the postal uh, service workers with additional reforms. I think the, the other thing that we look at, Maria, is this. When it's enhanced unemployment, right now there's one person in Washington, D.C 
D.C. that has acted on behalf of those unemployed Americans, and that's the President of the United States. So whether it's 300 or 400 as he proposed, I think we can get there uh, on that particular issue. Uh, $600, as you know, actually uh, uh, ended up paying the average uh, uh, unemployed worker more than what they would have made uh, uh, for showing up to work. So we're trying to make sure that we measure that. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm not so uh, uh, pessimistic that that is the stum stumbling block. Again, if we can push back and say, let's come together on what we agree upon, it'll provide a foundation for getting there. So you do believe that we will see another stimulus package before the election then, Mark? Well, you're I not do. Sure. And, you know, uh, yeah, no, I, I do. I'm not sure, obviously, but I do believe that we'll see that only because uh, I, I've had a, a number of conversations, probably uh, uh, a dozen, sometimes a day, uh, with different rank and file members. And when you listen to them, they're listening to their constituents. If we will just listen to the American people and meet those needs, like the President of the United States is doing, mm. I think we get there. And I'm more optimistic, uh, perhaps, today than I've been in a long time. Well, many of the president's critics want him out of office. We just spoke with <laughs> Lee Smith. He's out with a new book, The Permanent Coup. The Permanent Coup, whether it was the origins of the Russia probe, the impeachment, or even that article in The Atlantic last week, there's this constant movement to, to take down President Trump. We're all waiting on John Durham. The last time I was with you, Mark, you said, look, people should go to jail. We are going to see some indictments. Where are we on this? Do we know anything about John Durham and this criminal investigation and where this goes? Well, Maria, you've covered this for uh, for a lot longer than anybody else and probably are better informed than anybody that I know in terms of this particular issue. And, and we are still waiting on John Durham uh, in terms of any visibility in, uh, in the timeline. Uh, I, I don't have that. I can tell you additional documents that I've been able to review uh, say that a number of the players, the Peter Strucks, the Andy McCabe's, the James Comey's, and even others in the administration previously uh, are in real trouble because of their uh, willingness to participate in an unlawful act. And I use the word unlawful. At best, uh, it broke all kinds of protocols. And at worst, uh, people should go to jail, as I've mentioned previously. Well, you say you saw documents. Will those documents be declassified? We just saw Peter Strzok on, on 60 Minutes last night, Mark, and he's coming up with all reasons that they should have launched an investigation into Trump. These documents that you refer to, are they going to be declassified soon? Well, the president has uh, encouraged not only declassification, but full transparency. He has nothing to hide. I can tell you it's real easy for Peter Strzok to go on 60 Minutes when he doesn't have to raise his right hand and tell the truth. And, and all of his interview uh, is, is, I can tell you this, it's not backed up by the facts. It's not backed up by documents that I've seen. And ultimately, his house of cards will come falling down. Well, you know, you make a good point. They don't have to be under oath. The same with a guy like Adam Schiff. He doesn't have to be under oath to go on NBC News and say there's collusion in plain sight. And he's a sitting elected <laughs> uh, official. Yeah, well, Adam Schiff uh, has a very loose association with the, with the truth when it comes to this particular president. He continues to put out narratives and half-truths over and over again uh, when it, it really, when he of all people should know the facts. Uh, when you really look at the documents, he's had the same access to, to many documents that Republican members of Congress have had. And, and as you look in it, you can't look at those documents and say, oh, this is the way that everybody should be treated. In fact, they treated candidate Donald Trump and President Donald Trump very differently in an inappropriate way, and they must be held accountable. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Mark, it's good to see you this morning. Thank you so much, sir. Good we to will see, see you. you soon. Thanks to be and with you. And of course, you. we'll be it's watching. It's good to be with you. Yeah. Mark Meadows joining us there. We'll be right back. Stay with us.